kids get to popcorn now. Let me tell you the story of the space viking. Was Thor Love and Thunder as bad as people say it was? The answer is both yes and no. It was better than Thor Dark World, but not as good as Thor Ragnarok. This film, it was a mess from the opening scene. From the lackluster introduction of one of Thor's best villains to the cringe-hungry comedy that was spread throughout the entirety of the film. Gore's introduction felt rushed and thoughtless. For someone who has read the comics and is aware of the destruction and chaos Gore caused, this felt like a huge letdown. Turning Gore into a mindless villain seeking revenge on the gods. They brushed over Gore's motivations for his revenge with a hammer instead of a scalpel, leaving a huge mess of a backstory instead of a well laid out surgical plan. This was only the beginning. The tone of the movie didn't serve the villain of the story as well as it needed to be. Gore as the villain of the story was a complete waste. And an even bigger waste was the lack of screen time Christian Bale got for the role. His performance was easily a 10 out of 10. As a matter of fact, all the performances were solid. A great villain and even a greater actor was essentially downgraded to a C-tier plot device. Gore the God Butcher. He came, he saw, and he didn't butcher any gods at all. The only thing he butchered was his personal hygiene and his costume design. As I said before, and I continue to say it again, the look of Gore in the film was subpar. He did not look anything like his comic counterpart. Gore is a villain that could have easily had his own solo movie to fill the gap of his backstory to build him up as a high level threat for Thor, but sadly, we didn't get that. Natalie Portman's performance was also solid as well. The chemistry between Jane and Thor was definitely a high point for the movie for me. They also did some really cool things with Mjolnir and its new abilities. Jane was a force to be reckoned with on the battlefield, although she had absolutely no combat experience. So I guess Mjolnir just doesn't imbue you with stamina and god level strength, but also gives you grade A combat skills. But oh well, we'll just chalk this one up to movie magic. The soundtrack. This was epic as hell. You can never go wrong with Guns N' Roses. This was a true standout in the film for me. The music really had me jamming out in my seat in all honesty. This was definitely a 10 out of 10 soundtrack. The use of these great songs really pushed the action and the attitude of the film in the right direction in some scenes. But we were quickly brought back down to earth once the music stopped and the dialogue started to flow. Cringe comedy at its highest point. I can't get the sound of screaming goats out of my head for the love of God. This comedic plot device was absolutely useless in the film. This is absolutely a story about love, loss, and thunder, and only one of them was utilized right in the film. In conclusion, Bell's performance was a 10 out of 10. The soundtrack was a 10 out of 10. Natalie Portman's performance was solid and the chemistry they had together was off the charts. The plot and the tone of the film was an absolute waste for such a good villain in the comics as Gore. Thor Love and Thunder. Overall, it was better than Dark World, not as good as Thor Ragnarok, but still a disappointing mess. An average film at best. Well, that's it for the video, guys. Thanks for sticking it out to the end. This was my review of Thor Love and Thunder. It's definitely not the best Thor film, but also not the worst. This film will be a mixed bag for most audience members. And if you do go out and see it, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, guys, my name is Lincoln. This is the RPG Show. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.